your style is not that easily packed into a short set because you tend to be more a storyteller, long form. You take your time. And these are all compliments. You're not just calling me lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take your time. You just tell these stories. He's always got an excuse. You're more of a marathoner and I'm going, hey, I've got this 50 yard dash I want you to run. Yeah. Well, and, and like, I also like you're the first person to ever call me a, a racer of any kind. <laughs> so a lot of work goes into a short late night stand up set. Join me, J.P. Buck, as I spotlight the comedians who came up with some of my favorite coin sets. This is The Setup. Please welcome back to our show, very funny guy, Shane Torres. Let's talk about this Guy Fieri set. How does this thought come to you? I always wanted to tell jokes that nobody else could tell, right? Mm -hmm. Like, meaning they were mine. Uh, like, and they, they were like, that's him. It sounds like him right away. One of the things I would always see people doing as far as subject matter goes was just be like the the easiest way to like say something as shitty as like it's like Guy Fieri blah blah blah. It was like mm -hmm. something I saw people doing forever, and I really I thought it was um, kind of a dumb way to pack a parachute. It just was like unimaginative to me and like not really well researched and just very much in my mind a bit lazy mm -hmm. when I was seeing it about you know like because I know it and it's not not even to say it doesn't work, but it wasn't something I found like terribly exciting. Mm -hmm. It was like top 40 radio to me. So I kind of thought, well, what's different? Like, like what, what is the actual, you know, like, like why did, why did, just think about it for a second? Cause it's also the opinion everybody hold held about him at the time was like, just unanimous that he sucked, you know, like, and I was like, well, maybe he doesn't. Well, let's, let's find out. <laughs> you know, like, It started with the very opening line of the joke. That's the one thing that didn't really change ever that much was like, can someone please explain to me what the hell Guy Fieri ever did to anyone? The first time I did it, I did it at Whiplash uh, on the west side in Manhattan and it got a huge pop. And I was like, I remember it being I was like, oh, this is a good joke because I had to follow Judd Apatow. Uh -huh. So I was like, you know, so I was like, well, if I'm keeping up with the king of Hollywood, I'm doing all right. It would be hard to do a bit like this, say, back in like the 80s, before social media, before this sort of uniformity of thought of where people were just sort of like the hive mind of like, oh, that guy hates it. Yeah, I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah, it just kind of became that like negativity was just an opinion on him, but it wasn't informed. And it's kind of a way people are in general, which is like, it's just like that, ah, that person sucks, this sucks, that sucks. And there was never like, okay, sure. You can like, I understand how to react to something when you don't like it, but I also think you should still explain it. But also like how often like does, do you need to hate a, you know, someone like Guy Fieri? Like really, is he ever like in your, is he in your house? Is he at your place of work? Are you interacting yeah. with him? Like what's the, yeah. why carry around that? Yeah, well, and then there was like a there was a guy I met, and I thought this was actually very interesting. It's like you don't even know you do it, but he goes like he guy in Austin, I think his name uh, Brendan K. O'Grady, and he just goes he goes, hey, that bit's great, and just so you know, I make fun of him, but the very first thing I do whenever I'm on the road is see if Guy Fieri's been to a restaurant there. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. What I love also is you come right out of the box delivering a lot you know you have that first line you're you're not worried about an opener you're not trying to do a like how's everybody i don't know if you remember so we talked about it, you're like you call me like hey i love the bit and i think it's gonna do be great but it is all one bit mm -hmm. so like just so you know if they don't like it you can't you, you it's not you know it's not the seller at 130 you can't pivot out of it yeah. like you gotta you, <laughs> like, you gotta you can't be like where, where was it going with that guy fieri thing and then two <laughs> minutes later it's all everything bagels or whatever mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did think, like, maybe I should just give them one, like, very soft thing, like, just to get them, like, hey, real quick. But then it was kind of like, ah, fuck it. It's a little more fun to just be excited and, and see how it goes. Can someone please explain to me what the hell Guy Fieri ever did to anyone? <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about, the celebrity chef? People shit on that dude all the time. And as far as I can tell, all he ever did was follow his dreams. <laughs> Do you understand? People are horrible 
to a television personality and he didn't do anything wrong. Here's what he did do, America. The audience is sometimes a late night sets in studios or can be a little tight. And yeah. that joke, that line I've seen every time gets a huge pop yeah. and deservedly so. Every once in a while we get audiences, they are not as great as other audiences. That happens everywhere. Yeah. yeah. They're kind of leaning in going, okay, where, where are you going with this? You know, like when you're doing these big sets, I'm sure everyone's told you this, but like you, you're like, oh, my first little thing didn't get the thing, didn't get like what I expect of it. Mm -hmm. And you're like, ah, oh, this is, God, I feel like I've been up here an hour already. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like 20 seconds in one, one joke. Like, I'm such a fucking tin man armor kind of guy. <laughs> like, I really, I was, because I, I remember thinking it would just get like this loud pop and then I was just going to rev in and hit them for four and a half minutes or whatever mm -hmm. it is, you know? And then I remember it feeling like good, like it worked, but it wasn't like what I was expecting. And, and then I remember like, I kind of felt like I was moving a little faster. You've got them already, but like, it's like, it, it like you can definitely tell you've got a little bit of a task ahead of you of going, okay, yeah, this, group, this group of people needs a little softening up. He started a company where he hires everybody he pays more than minimum wage. He gives health benefits before he has to. He has a nonprofit where he gives pretzel making machines to schools so they can fundraise. I know that one sounds like I made it up, but I swear to Christ, it's true. You also have phrases every once in a while that are purely yours. I swear to Christ. It's another one of those, like, I don't write jokes well, so I have to figure out a way to say things that are funny. <laughs> well, that, that, I would not agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I don't write them like, like punchline-y, like someone who's great, but I'm not like him at all. It's like Sam Morrill, you know, like his acts mm -hmm. are, his, his, his is very punchy and very dense. I think I have to just be like, here I am, this dumb country rube with all his weird sayings or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I like writing that way. It feels like more, crea it's a fun way to be creative and not take an easy way out and just say, like, it's the craziest thing ever. You know, like mm -hmm. that's like kind of lazy writing. So yeah. like- it's funner to embody like a good, like turn of phrase, if you will. He works with Special Olympics athletes. And if you need a little more sugar with this medicine, he also officiated a gay wedding. Yeah. But because he has flames on his shirt, everybody shits all over this dude like he's a member of Nickelback. And by the way, what the hell did Nickelback ever do? They made 40 million bros happy. Yeah, you don't want them walking around pissed off. That's how we ended up in this mess. The Nickelback thing, did that start out as just a line and suddenly like, oh, wait, I can actually mine this a little more for a joke? It started out as an is-like joke. Mm -hmm. you know, like, which is not a thing I'm, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of, but I think you can take them further. Like, it's just the first step up the stairs. Like, But I said it. And I was like, that's good. It'll work. It's another thing people dog for no reason. I didn't research. They're not researched in the bit the way like Guy Fieri is, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so they may yeah. actually be horrible people. Yeah, they might be. But I saw somebody write a thing about that guy from Nickelback. Like, he's a genius because he knows exactly what people want. And that's what he <laughs> gives them. And I was like, hey, man, that's a fucking very good point. I think I read it on Consequence of Sound or something like mm -hmm. that. But I was like, I wish I could credit whoever wrote it. But I was like, yeah. That's true. It's just, hey, it's right there. That's what they want. They want to rock just enough. And <laughs> he, he gives it to them every time. Nobody gives anybody a, a, a seven out of 10 like Chad Kroger from Nickelback. <laughs> and look, I get it. I don't want to hang out with Guy Fieri either, okay? I know he looks like a hot topic manager moonlighting at a Friday's. <laughs> but he didn't do anything wrong. Well, what else has he done, Shane? I'm so glad you asked. He goes around the country to small businesses and gives them free advertising on a national platform on a weekly basis. Advertising those small businesses could never afford themselves with his own television show. But because his hair looks like he was electrocuted while drinking Mountain Dew, <laughs> people act like we need to saw his head off and put it on the internet. It does feel like you're involving the audience. And like, even there in that set, you do say, you know, you do play the audience. And what else does he do, Shane? Like yeah. You, 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 you ask the question on their behalf, even if they're not asking it, but you, you keep it going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's real special kind of asshole it takes to do something like that. <laughs> it's a way to check in with them. 
without like halting all the information and like making it directly conversational, like as opposed to being like, are you enjoying this? Like, or, you know, like, cause there's also no room for that in a late night set. There's not like, I mean, like you can't just do crowd work. Meanwhile, y'all can't get enough of Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> now we'll stop it here for a second. Okay, yeah. Because I feel like we do need to need to address this. There's a part in this bit where I do a kind of side-by-side -side comparative of the two uh, food personalities. And Anthony Bourdain was like such a darling. Yeah. And uh, I take the, what do you want to say? Like an inverted position mm -hmm. on it. Like of like why he might suck and kind of use the log the surface logic of that people would use against Guy Fieri that he just sucks because his hair's like this or he acts like this. And I do the same thing to Anthony Bourdain uh, in the bit pre his death. I get, is that, am I saying this right? Yes. Like, I yeah, think yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I think it, yeah. it's you're not. I didn't not, write this like into a eulogy I, or anything. You know, like I'm not a fucking animal. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. You're not aiming anything personally at Anthony Bourdain. This is just purely the sensationalization of Anthony Bourdain by the media and yes. the fans. Uh, yeah, and I will say before we go into this part, uh, I uh, I was performing at Bonnaroo when Bourdain died, and as on. I was having a good time. And uh, Marianne, who booked Kami there, was just like, I, have, I need somebody on stage right now. And I just kind of went into autopilot and I hadn't done this bit in maybe since this show. Mm -hmm. And I just, I did the, I did this bit and he had died the day before. And I like get to the Bourdain part and everybody was just like, whoa! And I had to be like, ah, I wrote this before yesterday. I'm going to just kind of plowed ahead. Mm -hmm. And it went over fine, but it was one of those moments where I was just like, ah, fuck. They just get canceled while well, the killers were playing in the background or whatever. But. <laughs> and he seems like the kind of dude that would be mean to dogs. So I <laughs> don't understand what is happening. <laughs> what does he do? So I put on Rolling Stones t-shirts and I tell food courts they suck. Come on, man. <laughs> Like, if you had to choose between being stuck in a foxhole with Anthony Bourdain or Guy Fieri, you're going to pick Fieri every time. I am still doing this bit. Uh, I love that line. <laughs> like, you... <God>. <laughs> it it's, goes it's... on for... It's kind of a lot. The, the bit you know <laughs> when did you feel you needed to include like letting people know like yes we're i'm aware that this is going on but we're going to keep going i remember like it was like growing and the bit was like coming into fruition and it kind of like i was really into doing the bit for mm -hmm. a little bit like a lot of comics are and i would do it at like a cool show or whatever and the people in the crowds i wanted to be killing in front of would be like jesus it's killing i would like i would know and they were like <laughs> i was such a surprise you know because i hadn't really I'd done some TV stuff, but I wasn't like a famous person yet, you know, like in LA or New York and I'm not famous now, but what I'm saying, like I got to show that I could have the best game of the night or whatever out of all the people on the show. And that bit was something that was doing it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I would see like it build and build and build. And then I would like, and it would be going well. And that would be like, and then I kind of like, was like, well, what would be like the funniest thing I could possibly do or what is a funny thing I could do in this bit? And I was just like, I could just acknowledge that this is taking a while, even if it's going well. <laughs> so look, to me, it's just funny to harp on something for way longer than people want to hear it. What's Bourdain gonna do? I'll tell you. It'll be like that dude in every World War II movie who sucks the whole time. <laughs> then when the Nazis show up, doesn't do his job, gets a bunch of good soldiers killed. Meanwhile, Guy Fieri's over here earning new nicknames like El Fuego. <laughs> Picking up live grenades, throwing them back, saying dope shit like welcome to Flavortown. <laughs> and he knows he's dying on that beach in France that morning, but he's there fighting. And what do y'all do? You shit all over him just because he had his sunglasses on the back of his neck. <laughs> I think it's awesome that he has a racing stripe painted on his fridge. <laughs> Love it if Banksy had painted it. And look, guys, 
I know I look like the kind of dude that would defend Guy Fieri. <laughs> but if that's what you're taking away from this, you're missing the point. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I'm Shane Torres. We really appreciate it. Jake Gordy says, first time I saw this, I was 100% on board with the Fieri hate train. By the end, this dude had completely persuaded me how and why I was wrong. That's the one I like. The I've gotten like some variations of that. And that is like, that is the nicest thing, I think. I think it's cool. Like, you know, I really think it's like, it's cool that like, it's a dumb joke about something that is not important, you know, like in the grand, but it's, it's nice to, it's really nice to see people can change their minds mm -hmm. who are just solidified in a thought. And then, yeah, that's, what's cool about that. Brian C says he positions himself at a strange angle. I know where you, you, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. <laughs> For a lot of this segment. So strange that it was only that the 10 second mark that I knew he had two hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's I have not heard that. Uh <laughs> I don't, yeah, I, I know people, I, it's just whatever, I do it for whatever reason, and it just kind of ended up being this weird thing I do mm -hmm. uh, when I perform. I've had a few people call it teapotting, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is like, it's, it's kind of the thing I like about it, because I'm shaped like one too, but uh, I like, uh, I don't, people bring it up, and they're, uh, it's just whatever, I don't know, man, I just do it. <laughs> You know, I know the bit did well and everything and like did well on the show and then on YouTube and all like it, it did well on the internet. But anytime he does something now at all in the news, I get tagged in it. And <laughs> like it's somebody said like, hey, I own a restaurant. He came to it. Anytime we re-air like our episode re-airs where we have I know I have to have extra waiters on that weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so I just I think that's very cool. Yeah, it's really cool. But then there's yeah. the. The, the other part, which is the curse of Fieri, that you're getting notified about this all the time. <laughs> it's, 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 a, I mean, it's, it's a small cross to bear for a man who's done so much for America. 